would make it harsh. Justice demanded that the full penalty of every sin of all mankind be paid by someone. It meant that it was not sufficient for Christ to offer up only his physical life on the cross. His pure human spirit had to descend into hell. He was authentic man with body, soul, and spirit. His spirit had to not only descend into hell, but as the Bible says, the lowest hell, whatever that means. The extreme penalty had to be paid. He must taste death for every man. There could be no adequate substitution unless Christ actually paid once and for all the eternal consequences of a sum total sin of the world. And that means he endured all that combined humanity could suffer. T.H. Nelson said, if Christ in spirit did not thus descend into hell, then we have no legal assurance that we may ever escape that horrid prison. The Father turned him over, not only to the agony and death on Calvary, but to the satanic tortures of his pure spirit as part of the just desert of the sin of the race. And as long as Christ was the essence of sin, he was at Satan's mercy in that place of torment where all finally penitent sinners, sinners are imprisoned upon leaving this life. And while Christ was identified with sin, Satan and the hosts of hell ruled over him as over any lost sinner. And during that seemingly uh, endless age of that, that that horrible nether abyss of death. Satan did with him as he would. And all of hell was in carnival. This is part of the, of the price of what Jesus bore for us. This is the price that he paid for you and for me. The agonies which Christ endured in hell are believed to best be described in the 88th Psalm. He, that is the Father, laid him in the lowest pit, the pit of the underworld, in the dark place, in dense darkness. I, that is Jesus, am full of trouble, weighted with evil. Thou hast brought me to Sheol, the kingdom of death. I am become a man without God. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me. Thy wrath presseth. Thou hast laid thy fury upon me. Thou hast left all, let all thy waves strike me. I have called upon thee, my God, day and night, and thou hearest me not. I have borne thy terrors, so I am distracted, helpless. The outbursts of thy wrath, thy streams of wrath, have cut me off. And no finite mind can ever begin to comprehend the depth of the anguish that he endured during that seeming eternity in that horrible hell. I believe this is best described in the words of the prophet. He hath poured out his soul unto death. He suffered in our stead until in the mind of God the claims of eternal justice were fully met. He, as God, shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And when the claims of eternal justice were fully discharged and Christ was justified in his spirit, he then was made Lie in the spirit. His spirit was not annihilated. 
It only died spiritually, like any sinful human spirit. It was completely cut off, completely cut off, separated from God. And thus, in order to be made alive unto God and restored to fellowship with him, he had to be born again. He had, be, he, had become, he had become the very, very essence of sin. And since sin had totally alienated him from the Father, the only way that he could be restored to fellowship with the Father was through new birth to new life. I think this has meaning in Revelation 1.5, Jesus Christ, who is the first begotten from among the dead. And as long as he was identified with sin, he was in the clutches of Satan. And the hosts of hell he was in the clutches of Satan and the hosts of hell like any other sinner. But when justice was announced and he was made alive and declared righteous in the supreme court of the universe, the tables were turned. The battle in that cavern despair is described by Peter in Acts 2.24, whom, whom God hath raised up and, loo and loosed, having loosed the veins of death because it was no longer possible that it should be held by it. <laughs> That's my fault. Wait. <laughs> <clears throat>